Hi, Alyssa DeHart here. Welcome to the coaching studio. Today in the studio, my guest is Ben Dooley. He is a master certified coach with the International Coaching Federation, and you can find all his details down below. If you want to get more information, I'll have links to everything for you. And so I want to just start by saying, Ben, welcome to the studio. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me here today. I, oh. I've we were talking about the other, uh, some other podcasts and, and such that are out there. And I, and I so love that this is becoming more of a trend of yeah. coaches and, and people who are so hungry and curious about coaching that they're going out and finding more people. Cause I run into coaches all the time that are like, where can I find this? Where can I, it's like, here, here's where you go to start learning more, go to these podcasts. So thank you. Go. And it's really lovely because there's so many different coaches out there who, you know, attained an MCC credential. And I think it's important for people to really learn a little something about that journey. And in many ways, just to be totally transparent, I think it's because I I would love to see more people, whether or not they get the credential or not, I don't care, but that they're they're growing their own coaching capacity to more of that partnership and, and invitational um, sort of space, which MCCs often inhabit very beautifully. So, so let's start with the first question. I'm really curious, you know, what what influenced you as you decided to become a coach? I Years ago, at the time of this taping, it was actually, uh, almost 19 and a half years ago, um, actually a bit longer than that, I was, um, I was doing like self-development classes I was taking and for my own growth and development. And, and there was a particular course that I found really uh, exciting and engaging and empowering. And so I was repeating it, you know, to deepen the learning. And they said, well, you know, if you're doing this a second time, you can partner up with somebody and then kind of be their support. Nice. Okay. You know, and that will, and of course they're selling it like, you know, that will deepen your learning. You'll be handling it from, oh, well, I can learn more. And so I partnered up with Bob and then in between our weekly classes, we would get on the phone and say, well, so Bob was going, well, you know, my boss is an idiot and now well, this is kind of frustrating and I'm dealing with this crap. Oh, okay. Well, uh, so do you remember that lesson that we had last week where our instructor was talking about this and this and this? Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay. So I mean, like, I don't, you know, what are you thinking about that? And I realized really quickly, I was getting more out of that experience than I was of the content that they were teaching. Mm. So I talked with a friend of mine and I was telling her about this and she was, uh, she was in the educational world. And so she, you know, with the um, uh, school counseling. And so she had her ear into that and she said, you know, there's this thing called coaching. <laughs> this thing. This is, this is about 20, almost 20 years ago. So yeah. coaching really was kind of just isolated to the California West coast woo woo thing and in small little pockets elsewhere, but it wasn't really a commodity the way that it is now, mm -hmm. certainly not worldwide. And so there's this thing called coaching where you can actually like get paid and this could be your business. And I said, stop lying to me, you're full of crap. <laughs> and she said, no, really? And so I reached, sure enough, I researched, I said, here's a school. Okay. At that time, there was only like four schools really to choose from. There was a few more, but I found one that I really liked uh, that interested me. And I, I, by the same token, my mom had just met a woman who had gone through the training I was looking at. And I said, mom, I'm looking to do this thing called coaching. I just met a coach. So it was this sort of serendipitous timing of so much. And when I walked into training, and I know there's so many coaches who have had their version of this, but for me, it was so crystal clear. When I walked in that first day of training, it was something in me woke up mm. that I didn't even know had been asleep my whole life. Something woke up. Now, I had spent pre that time committed to being an actor. I had done, my entire college was acting training. I spent all my money on classes and courses. I was auditioning, I was building my business. I was doing that. I was you know, seeking my fame and fortune in the big city, all that stuff. 
And I knew without a doubt, because as an actor and as an artist, it is a powerful, nobody becomes an artist of any type for, because it's a lucrative money-making opportunity. <laughs> it is an artistic expression. It is, I need to be here because a part of me comes alive and is expressed. And so for me, that was acting for forever and ever. When I walked into my coach training, a whole new version of that became right in front of me. And I went, I get to be this now. Yeah. And, and literally since that moment, 20, almost 20 years later, I've never looked back Isn't that amazing? Uh, in a completely new direction. That's beautiful. I love the idea that something in you just woke up. That's yeah. just beautiful. And I've seen that with so many coaches that I've worked yeah. with, you know, or that, that part of me that got to be expressed as an actor suddenly went, I can do this. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I really appreciate that. I really appreciate that. And yet when you began coaching and you began this journey, how has your perception of coaching itself changed through the years? Um, I think my perception has changed not necessarily identically, but uh, uh, as the profession has changed. So coaching in the early days was really um, it was really about you know helping people work through their issues, um, get through their blocks, achieve their success. You know, kind of, and it was it was a lot of it was in tandem with the stuff that I was learning in that. Uh, self-development work, but I was learning how to do it with somebody for somebody um, or how to help them do it. And coaching over the years has evolved and, and shifted into so many different colors and shades and this magnificent rainbow of, of accomplishment and growth and expression and, and creativity and productivity and, and everything. Um, so it's really been fascinating to watch it. And at the same token, my own journey, once I completed my training, there was nothing else like, and then what? Mm -hmm. I got trained. Well, then you do certification. Okay. Certification is the exact same thing, just deeper. So there's no, there was, there was no, and then what? And so I was desperately hungry for what else? And so that ended up being my own course. So my own discovery of coaching deepened because of my hunger and passion for wanting to know more about what this coaching thing was that nobody knew mm -hmm. and nobody was saying. Right. Um, and out of that, really got to recognize deeper layers that I, I do in my training, I do with my one-on-one -on -one work. I'm, I work specially with coaches who are ready for that what's next. Yeah, yeah, um, and, I, and I think that's a, it's a and, really, and, oh, go ahead. Really quickly, and what I discovered is that a lot of our coaching is kind of up here, mm -hmm. kind of on the surface, and it's good work, but there is so much underneath yeah. that we're not typically accessing. And so to sort of paraphrase a, a myth, a myth you know, we say that we use 10% of our brains. Um, we really, in, in many ways, we're using 10% of our emotions. We're accessing 10% of our body and our, and our inner right, wisdom. The somatics and, and our and somatics. We're, we're, we're really living 10% of our lives, give or take a number, but it's, <laughs> you know, I'm not you attached take to another 10 or so. <laughs> right. You said it was 10%. Why it's really 13. I don't care. <laughs> um, but it's that what I really recognize that in this work that we do, we're also really across the board. We're most of the time really accessing only about 10% of our coaching power. 
Right. No, and I really agree with you. And I mean, there's uh, several things that you said. One of them is, you know, most coaching really takes place. And I, I love, I mean, the iceberg theory is just such a nice, simple way of, of looking at it, you know, actions, results, actions, results, actions, results. But until you like, uh, until you dive below the waterline and get to what is really driving that and that you're brave enough and courageous enough and frankly, self-aware enough to begin to ask those kinds of what's next and, and what is really happening here and what am I going to be brave enough to ask um the coaching stays very situational and 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 not in a bad way because it can be incredibly useful but a bit superficial it doesn't really change the 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 clients in a sustainable long-term way often often because like the percentage you know some people get great success just working on actions and results. So right. there's always the people who do. So yeah, no, I appreciate that. You were about to say something. What's, well, what remember that? I said this could actually go into a complete tangent to fill the entire thing, but I know you have more questions. I do. I have more questions for you. What was it for you, the challenge as you were developing your own coaching practice and, and actually even that movement from beginning ACC and like, ah, oh, this is so amazing into PCC. Like, what do you see are the challenges that you navigated in order to get to MCC? Okay. Um, I'll try to keep this succinct. So uh, the, um, the, the challenge, the first and foremost challenge that I discovered because I came from an acting background, I was a skilled actor. I, I did commercials, radio spots, toys, uh, uh, stage, musicals. Uh, I mean, I, I, audio book, everything. Um, so the skill was never an issue for me. It was always the, the business side of it and the marketing and the promoting and the staying on it and the feeding and the it constantly. And I had friends and colleagues in the biz who, you know, I was making, I was making enough to support myself, have some extra money for fun. You know, I was doing okay for years. I was doing okay. But I had friends who were supporting their families. They were making coin and they were treating it like a business. I was treating it like a money-making hobby. Mm. So I knew when I walked into coaching and when I felt that awakening and, and I had a really instant hard truth, if I'm going to invest several thousands of dollars to do this, I'm not making a lateral move to do it and just make the same okay money. If I'm going to do this, I'm going to, otherwise I'll just stay doing what I'm doing. But if I'm going to do this, I need to learn business. I need to learn marketing. I need to learn branding. And this is the two worlds really with any business. You've got product and then you've got, you know, how it's presented and the marketing and the sales and all that stuff. And those were foreign worlds to me. Mm -hmm. They were uncomfortable. They, they challenged my own uh, comfort zone, my own skill sets. Um, it, was, it was a whole new world, right. which is very common because, and this is my theory, but I have yet to have it been disproven, um, the type of person who's typically attracted to coaching is typically not the type of person who would be typically attracted to business and marketing and all of that. Buy so, my stuff. <laughs> right. And so, one more thing for $9.99, you know. Exactly. Yeah. And then we're inundated. We are drowning in poor marketing mm -hmm. and, and intrusive marketing and deceptive marketing and inauthentic marketing. We're trained that marketing and business and money and sales is now something to be avoided and despised and resisted. Yeah. yeah. And so there's a lot that comes up. And so, and, and that's a different mindset and whole life set yeah. than somebody who is, I want to help people. I love this. And this, this feeds my soul and all this wonderful stuff that attracts coaches 
yeah. but we got to get the business. You know, and as you, you're saying that, the thing that really shows up for me is just the, you know, you, you, I, I absolutely agree with you. You know, we come into this business uh, typically as people who care about other people and want to be useful. Um, and we want to support people to make changes. And there's this other factor that we really have to explore because otherwise it's to your point, a hobby that I make some money at versus a business that I'm growing so that I can actually support myself. And I think there is a, if I'm hearing you correctly, you know, there is that journey that we have to make where we become whether it is, I don't know, the confidence to, to learn how to market in an authentic way that resonates for us so that we're not like, hey, I can get you like 12 clients a day for the next month, you know, or you can make a million dollars a month. But I think that that fear that underlies um, that shift from, you know, client facing to, to potential client facing oh, is... Yeah is the thing that leaves people very vulnerable to all of that, to your point, not truthful advertising about how you build a coaching business. And I mean, and so I'm really curious, I know you started your coaching journey 19 years ago. I mean, when did you discover you really needed to look at this as a business and how long has that journey been? Well, right off the bat. And it was actually perfect timing because my class, my, my uh, school, they said, by the way, uh, and this was like literally our first weekend of training. And they said, by the way, we're launching a brand new business development program. And I like, and I'm in. invite you to be uh, in one of the, what was it, in the, uh, the Pilgrim Pioneering? Uh, I think it might have been one of like the pioneers or something like that. You know? And I was like, me? Because I don't know this stuff and it's freaking me out. Yeah. Um, so, so I, so that was the big thing that I learned early on, but you brought up something that's actually, now we've got this, that's logistics. That's stuff that you can get from a book. You can get right. from a class. You right. can go online and LinkedIn see. LinkedIn has a class on it for free. Exactly. Information age now, all of that, those logistics and details and steps and stages is available. Yeah. YouTube. Or, or a class or whatever. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, I mean, free is great. Class, let's not diminish. When you're working with an expert, they're True. going to teach you and walk you through the specifics and train you, hopefully. hopefully. So, um, so just because it's free doesn't mean it's great, but it's out there is what I'm saying. What's what's missing and what can't get found online and what can't get taught easily is what you pointed to so beautifully, which is the confidence. Mm -hmm. in what I am selling. And the, one of the things that makes it so challenging and difficult is, well, first off, it's hard to sell something when you're, when you haven't really racked up proof and you really, and you're new at this. And it drives me insane where, you know, the, this magic formula of like, how do I get clients? Well, just push yourself out there. You know what? If it was that easy, we'd all be doing it. So mm -hmm. Stop with that magic advice. By the way, coaches, treat the people that you're working with like you would your clients and stop telling them what to do. Help them discover. Yeah, yeah. So little side tangent of my own soapbox. But anyways, um, but what was needed was the confidence. Mm -hmm. And what makes it additionally difficult is that, again, you brought up also, our clients are coming to us just because the only thing they care about is my problem and it needs to be fixed. Mm -hmm. That's it. Can you fix my problem? Mm -hmm. And it's a vicious coaching, circle. Mm -hmm. Coaching is not about fixing problems. <laughs> oh, crap. But such an easy hook. Let me try. <laughs> right. So I'm going to have, I'm going to market myself to I can't promise you results, but please give me money and we'll see what can happen. And that's what it starts to feel like. Yeah. So, yeah. so that deflates our confidence in what we do. We're so excited. We see all what's possible in our training. We're practicing with each other. We're learning this. Oh, oh coaching is so amazing. It's so incredible. So amazing. And then we suddenly get out there into the real world and nobody cares. Nobody's buying coaching. 
Yeah. I promise anybody watching this, and I know you can back this up, not a single person is, but there, nobody's wandering the streets. Where is a coach? I want a coach. Nobody is buying coaching. Right. They're buying results. And we can't deliver and promise those results because that's not coaching. Right. That's consulting, that's expertise, that's teaching and training, but that's not coaching. You know, but what I would say here is that they are also buying relationships. And uh, so, and so at that point, you know, it becomes how are you building relationships versus trying to make a sale? Um, and that's a, that's a, that may take us down a complete rabbit hole that. <laughs> but, but, but here's the steps, because if we look at the stages, what they're looking for is fix my problem. What gets them to pay attention and to be interested is what you are bringing, your brand, your style, your magic secret sauce, your essence, your whatever, your track record, blah, 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 all of that stuff. And what has them say yes is the relationship that is sparking. Yeah. Because that's in that relationship is when they get to see this is what's possible. Yeah. So that's, you absolutely nailed, that's the trick. And that's something that took me years to discover yeah. because nobody was necessarily teaching that. They were teaching the logistics and the mechanics of marketing and sales. They weren't talking about the heart of it. Yeah. And I think- now, I've, Since yeah. then, I'm not the only one. I've run into many other coaches and trainers who, who do this, but it was not out there for a long time. Yeah. Well, and I think it's even just a, it's even just in a larger cultural way within organizational businesses. It's people are starting to have a more of a sense of, you know, we are helping a friend solve a problem. Um, and granted coaches aren't solving a problem necessarily, but if, but, you know, you said something earlier in the, the uh, that idea of, you know, um, if you're a, versus, a consultant versus a coach and, and I've been playing with this because the first time I heard, um, teach a man to fish, feed him for his life, give a man a fish, feed him for the day was in probably 19, 19, 1990, if not right. 1989. Like I heard it a long time ago. Well, and then you take them to Costco and then they just get fish in bulk. And then well, it's and, a lot easier. And, and that's the point, right? Like if, if I'm going to just give you fish, if I'm going to just feed you fish, I'm a fish marketer. I'm not a coach at that point. And if I'm going to be a coach, then what are what is the way that I'm going to be in relationship with you whoever the client is, how am I going to be in relationship with you? Where what I do is I use my expertise not to feed you fish, but rather to be curious with you in ways that you start to discover your own internal, you know, wisdom, whether it's your own body wisdom, your own thinking wisdom, your own experiential wisdom, all the things that you know. And, and I think that when we go back to this marketing piece, I think part of it is I think a lot of times coaches, especially new coaches, and I'm guessing here just uh, from my own experience when I was a new coach, was I didn't really know how to have that conversation with somebody in any kind of elegant way. So it really sounded choppy and I wasn't certain. And that uncertainty played a huge part also in the clients that were like, I don't know if I want to take a chance on this because this is going to cost money. And you don't sound like you know what you're talking about. So, well, you know, part of it is also getting clarity about like what it is that I do. And I mean, I think giving, doing like in the chemistry session, be a coach start giving that experience of being a coach to the person and then they go this is great like i i haven't had a conversation like this in years and they walk away feeling like a genius and they like you and then they want to come back and have more of that that's my thought absolutely i'm going to take that even one step further you do it okay so this is a, this <clears throat> uh shameless promotion this is part of my uh, advanced coach training program, the Fast Pass to Masterful Coaching. This is a small, teeny tiny little portion, but there's a mythology that we, we do this and then we set the discovery session and then we get the agreements. And then we, when we get on the call, we then get the agenda established. And then after all that stuff is said and done, then ah, we finally get to coach. Right. And I say, Silly. tremendous, well, we get trained that though. 
I, I agree with you, but I also think I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with what you're, I'm pre-agreeing with what I know is going to come out of your mouth. <laughs> there it comes. Right. So this is a constant thing. And even when it's not directly taught, we start given, being given structures like, okay, first you need to get, you cannot coach unless you have a clear agenda. All right. So you're going to need to get the agenda clear and then you can coach. Totally well-intentioned, but it starts to become this undercurrent of misled. Mm -hmm. And so the simple thing is in our coaching, it's everything is all about ABC. High quality graphics. Wow. A, A B, C. <laughs> always be coaching. Always, yeah. be always be coaching. coaching. Always be coaching. And that's it. When, to write what you said. When you're seeking the agenda, you're coaching them. Mm -hmm. When you're doing a discovery session, you're freaking coaching them. Mm -hmm. When you're marketing, you're, coaching. you're in a coaching conversation to just not one person. You're in a very limited, structured, <laughs> restrained coaching with your viewers. Yeah. When you're having a sales conversation, you're having a coach conversation it's just like the topic and the language changes yeah i can tell you're not passionate about this at all so not at all <laughs> always be coaching always be <laughs> coaching and you'd be amazed how even in my class after lesson after lesson they still go okay so like well i mean I, what about this thing coach it <laughs> Yeah. But, and, and I like the always be coaching because it's bringing a little Glen Gary, Glenn Ross into this conversation. And I prefer the always be coaching version of this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. With all respect to Alec Baldwin, who did it. Yeah. Well, and you are an actor from New York. So, you know, you know all that stuff. Um, let me but ask you. Oh, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Next question. Next question. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, we have a new uh, competency, the coaching mindset. And I'm curious, how do you personally take care of yourself and continue your own learning and development and self-reflective practice? Um, that's all revealed in my advanced coach training program. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> um, <laughs> actually, um, so it is. Um, and I, um, I also have taken every single core competency and kind of rewritten it to a deeper level. It's not to say that what they do is wrong because actually the, I like the redesign of the core competencies. A lot of the redesigning was stuff that I had redesigned when I was training going, I, I know they say this, but don't do this instead. Mm -hmm. So then ICF is doing it and it's great. They've redesigned mindset is a uh, very easily overused, misused, misunderstood, and kind of vapid, worthless word sometimes because it's diluted. It's, we hear it all the time. And so, and so there's something about, yes, I get the mindset, but there's actually something bigger. So it's a lot about really, and this is the, this is one of the crux things. I know you're going to ask like, oh, well, what did you discover? And what did you, one of the crux things that I discovered was there's a coach within us. That's the coach that woke up. Mm -hmm. That's a part of me that went, oh, I'm here. Mm -hmm. And that coach inside you, inside me, inside of you, the listen, the viewer here, that coach is incredibly beautiful and brilliant and powerful. And that coach, that is, has uh, his or her own mindset, heart set, spirit, body, everything. So it's really just the remembering and connecting mm -hmm. to this brilliant, powerful, wise, generous, creative, committed coach, and whatever it is for you. So it's the identifying of who is this here. Mm. Just having a generic coaching mindset as ICF lays it out is fine, 
because it's, oh, well, a coach does this and it's not therapy and it's not this, but it is this. That's great. But that deeper part of this is who I am when I am mm -hmm. doing this. And yeah. that is all the difference. Absolutely. Nice. What is something that we would never guess about you? And I have a few guesses about you that I could just make, but I'd love to hear something <laughs> that maybe we wouldn't just guess about you. All right. You, you want to guess first or? <laughs> Always be coaching. No, I'm joking. <laughs> okay. I got two things uh, that, that one is, one is probably going to be like, oh yeah, I guess that makes sense. Um, before I got into coaching way many years ago, uh, I was actually, I spent a couple of summers touring in a, uh, a small town circus and was a clown in the circus. Now, from that, there's some powerful, powerful learnings because one of the things, I got my nose. Oh, look at uh, that. <laughs> one of the things that I learned was that, and this kind of ties in with what I was just talking about, when you put on the makeup, there's something that happens where you become this persona. You become this energy. You become this character. You talk, you act, you walk, you think, you react, you engage as this persona that you've identified and created. And as a result, everybody else buys into it. I got away with things that I would never, I could be arrested <laughs> for. Right. I would walk anywhere. We would do shows at like shopping malls and during breaks, I would go walking around and I'd start pulling things off of shelves and rearranging it in the stores. I would go into the fountains and start picking up loose change. And, you know, and I would, I mean, I could do anything yeah. and get away with it. So there's something that happens when we put on that mask. And there's something that happens as I learned when we take off that mask and we see what's really inside and that we still have the same permission to show up fully and authentically and powerfully, that we actually, we have so much more permission to show up than we think we do. Yeah. That's also one of the things that we get to bring into coaching with our clients is to help them. Well, but I can't because, well, I shouldn't, well, it's not right. It's not proper. And I should just confine and restrain and hold and actually, Actually, you are here. I don't know what happens after this. I don't know what happens when we die. My greatest wish is that in that split moment when I die, I go, oh, oh that's what happened. Oh, boy, I was off. Okay. Um, but right now, I don't know. None of us do. We have guesses. We have strong beliefs based on teachings and religions and books and what other people have said, but none of us actually knows what happens. We don't. So with that, to the best of our knowledge, our knowledge, we have just this life. Yeah. We might have more later on. We just don't know. Right. But we, we do know we have this life. And so we're here to live it fully. And every day we don't is just a day that we're not stepping into the valuable, irreplaceable gift that each of us have been given. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, you know, I, I mean, I think that that is so important is that that reminder, right, that that how are we fully embodying our life, right? And and I didn't know that you were a clown. And I do wonder, do you still go into shopping malls and rearrange things? On uh, no. No. <laughs> no. Um, my favorite, though, was that we decided to get, uh, my partner and I, we decided to get our ears pierced. Um, and so we went, I am the loud, obnoxious clown. Uh, clown. <laughs> and so I am you know, the woman is just doing the alcohol in my ear. We're in makeup, by the way. We thought it'd be funny to do it in a dress. <laughs> and so she's like just swabbing the alcohol and I'm causing a panic and screaming and causing a commotion. And I, I mean, I said, people are walking by like, what is happening to this poor man? I probably drove away and down her an art project. <laughs> oh, meanwhile, my partner is the silent clown. And so he's busy signing 
and he starts to actually pass out from the from the uh, ear piercing. And so he and nobody can understand what's going on, and we all think it's a bit, but he's literally really going down, whining, <laughs> and it's just like, oh, so yeah, memories that you that you will never forget and never were forget. fully lived, fully lived. <laughs> um, so next question, yes, what? Yeah, so you know, what is something that you? might share with someone wanting to become more masterful in their coaching. And I think you've already shared a lot. So I don't know if there's just like, besides always be coaching, um, is there any other tidbit that you well, would offer? And even the, even the always be coaching, that's the general construct, right. but there's like so many, but how, but yeah, but what, but ah, and that's the stuff where even in concept we get the concept but it's looking at great now what what's getting in the way of that what's derailing what's short-circuiting where are we unconsciously making exceptions mm -hmm. so um so that is, so it is it's a simple concept but it also can be a little radical it can certainly fly in the face of what we have either been taught or what we think we've been taught but that's really the step that makes the difference that we're not just compartmentalizing our skill and we set up the chess pieces and get ready in order to, it's that we show up. So, so the big insight, I'm gonna actually tell you, I'm gonna tell everybody the secret <laughs> on how to get your MCC. Okay, we're ready. Drum this roll. And it's and this is actually everybody. This whole big mythology. Oh, it's so hard, and there's all this failure. This is this is is easy. This is exactly how I and how every other MCC got their MCC. Drum roll. Here we go. I simply did it right twice. Yeah. I sent him two recordings that somebody else. Or maybe two, someone two else <laughs> agreed and said, in their opinion, yeah. not going to debate trained, informed, but their opinion, that's really excellent. I failed my MCC by sending in two recordings that, however brilliant I thought they were and other people thought they were. Whoever was the one or two or however individuals who evaluated for that purpose disagreed. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, right or wrong, good or bad. All it was was a performance. I just performed my co Here, look at my coaching. Listen to it. Tell me what you think. That's it. That is how every single MCC got their MCC is by performing it twice to somebody else's criteria. That's it. Interesting. Now, yeah. Am I wrong? I don't think that you are wrong because I passed two assessments. <laughs> That's it. There you go. <laughs> and when I brought this up, by the way, this can sometimes piss off MCCs. No, because we hold we hold our credential like with such. Oh, I really am trying oh. to kick that pedestal out from under MCC because I it, because I think it's a bit of an ego trip in that. It regard. is. But, <laughs> I'm an MCC. No, oh, and I've had coaches go, but well, no, no, no. It's a lot of hard work. Sure, everything is. It's hard to get your BCC. It's hard to get your ACC. Oh. Congratulations, you just did it longer. <laughs> so what we're really talking about and this is the thing that again like those mccs this is not to devalue what we do and who we are but it's to really recognize it's a performance mm -hmm. and you just do it right and then they go yes here you go mm -hmm. and i've known amazing brilliant acc coaches who are doing incredible amazing coaching i agree with you i know MCC coaches who are coaching for crap. Yeah. And you know, if you're, and offended by it, you're one of them. So, what? No, and viewer, and if you're offended by that, you're one of them. <laughs> Got it. Uh, I was like, wait a minute, what? Um, not you. No, no, not you. No. <laughs> so, 
there's a difference. Yeah. This is the other big thing that it really sank in when I discovered it. There's a big difference between doing MCC coaching and being and being that masterful coach. Yeah. Because Forrest Gump got it right, man. Forrest Gump, mom always said, stupid is and stupid does, right? Now, that's a little derogatory, a little insulting, but there's something here that's true. Stupid is as stupid does is basically saying, if you see yourself this way, if you, if you think this way, if you this way, you're going to act this way. And so the same is true. This is what we coach. This is what we, you and I just got done talking about is that deeper thing. How do you see yourself? How are you showing up? How, what do you believe is true about you? So that inner you, that inner masterful coach, when we connect to them, we bring them out. That coach, masterful is as masterful does. Yeah. And so when we are that coach, those MCC performances are easy. Yeah. And I just, I think the only thing I want to just say is the, the languaging of performance. I want to be really clear that it's not that this is a pretend I'm acting, oh. but it is a way of I'm demonstrating my presence and capacity to be in curiosity and partnership with another human being. And that's the performance. Like, and I talk about this with my mentor coaching clients also look you may not always coach this way but you do need to if you're going to throw this in for an assessment you knew, do need to be able to demonstrate you have the capacity to be right. in deep partnership with a client and I'm hearing your languaging of performance but I believe that what you're talking about is not like a performance art piece but rather a truly being present with that coach inside of yourself and with the human being that you're talking well, to. No, actually, no, you were right the first time. I mean, because what it is, is we're, all they have is what they see. Right. It's whatever it is we're putting out there. They have no experience of our inner mindset and right. all of this wonderful woo-woo right. stuff. And they have no idea of the interaction and the engagement and the energy and the flow with the clients and all of that. All they get is what they see and hear. That's true. And that's the performance of it. It's not that we're putting on a show. Absolutely. Which is, I think that that's the, that's the caveat to this. Yeah. Right. But we are on display. Yeah. And by the way, here's the other little thing that throws off so many cards. I know you run into those all the time. You just said this. You got to check off all the boxes without looking like you're checking off all the boxes. Yeah. So, so there's a, you're doing a, you're performing your coaching without putting on a show. <laughs> But notice how that starts to become contradictory. And I got to make sure I'm doing it right. And what do they want? And what are they saying? And am I listening enough? And am I asking the right questions? And am I, is there a deeper awareness? Oh, I got to give them an assignment and a homework. Oh, I got to do, oh, wait, am I doing ethics right? Oh, what, where's my mindset? Where's my mindset? Am I present? Am I present? Guess what? You're not any of this. Yeah. You're too and much so, in your head at that point. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so it's, again, it's yet connected this coach yeah and let that coach put the human part of you to the side that is trying so hard to do it right and to make it work and all of that and let this coach get into the driver's seat and that is easier said than done it takes attention it takes willingness it takes practice it takes recognizing and wanting it but that is ultimately the secret that made MCC easy. Yeah. So Ben, just a quick little blurb about what are you involved with today and where can listeners find you? Oh my goodness. What am I not involved in? I'm so <laughs> um, I, well, I'm, I, there's a couple of things. Um, so I've got a brand new Facebook group called Masterful You Coaching Community. And that's where I get to jump in and spout these little insights and nuggets and more. Um, and, and, and that's absolutely free to join in. Um, but I, I have also two things that I absolutely every coach should know about. One is the coaching skills forum. The, remember I said my hunger and my quest for there's got to be more and there was no more. 
And so I created these calls 16 and a half years ago that focus any coach that shows up is part of the conversation. You got to come. Okay. Um, and we talk twice a month and we focus on a single aspect, a single skill of our coaching in deep, provocative conversation. This goes where I, this does not, the stuff that comes up on these calls don't come up in other trainings and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Or they may come up, well, this was from here, but maybe that's right, but this is all like there and kind. And even uh, all coaches, even MCCs come to these calls and go, wow, I hadn't thought about it that way. That totally opens up a whole new level. All right, so, so I'll be on that call and I'll have a link to that yeah, so that people can find and that. Those calls, by the way, those calls are free. Nice. Us. And And on the website, part of my new membership platform that I'm building, is you have access to, at the time of this, over 380 recordings. Wow. Yeah, you can listen to one a day for free, get deep, powerful learning all year. Yeah. So there's that. And then there's the class that I teach, which is the Fast Pass to Masterful Coaching, which is, I, I would put up against every other coach training out there. This is, I've yet to find, there's some great trainings out there, but nothing that targets the coach and the growing and the skill sets and not just the prescription of, you need to do this instead. It's growing the coach so that you know what to do. You know how to handle all the unexpected, any unexpected thing that shows up, anything your client the most audacious, insane, ridiculous, overwhelming, freaking out problems <laughs> that the client brings you, got it, bring it on. Yeah, It's yeah. all there. So I, I highly invite all of it, anybody watching this to join uh, and check that out. And I'll go even one more. Anybody who's watching this, you, you people are really special. Let me know, hey, I saw you on the thing. Great, and I will then give you a 10% discount link. Wow. And if you'll send that to me, I'll just put it in the uh, thing below and then anybody Absolutely. can just check, check, click because, on it. You know, so, yeah, brother got to make a buck, but I'm here to help you. And it's yeah. price wise, the most phenomenal bang for your buck that you will ever get. And I've had coaches, even just this current time around, a lesson four and a half out of 30 say, wow, if I stop now, I got more than my money's worth. That's brilliant. One That's coach brilliant. said that after the first lesson. So go ahead. So my final question, as we're moving into a close, if you were writing your autobiography today, what would the title be? I love that you asked that question because I kept wanting to like, it'd be something like so profound. <laughs> but it actually, um, the, the title of the book strangely for the first time, but I love this title. Uh, I think the title of my auto autobiography would be Hamlet was right. And on that note, no. Ben, thank you so much for being on the coaching studio. There is a really big reason why that is. Yeah, but they're going to have to come on one of your shows to find out more about that. So I love that. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. And thank you to all the listeners and coming back to the coaching studio. Please like, subscribe, uh, leave comments. We'd love to hear them all. And uh, yeah, please, please. And thank you again so much for being here today. My pleasure. Thank you.